Well, it's just, it's like I feel the need. It's like I feel the need for speed, you know? Today we are talking about the level one exercises to help you get faster in the off season. And we're gonna talk about two types of speed today. The first one is starting speed or sort of impulse speed. Let's go. Do you ever feel like when you're coming out of your butterfly, there's a little lag. So you kind of get that blade planted and then you go to push and it's sort of a, uh, uh, and then your power comes. There's a little lag in that bottom sort of three to six inches. You know what I mean, right? Well, part of the reason you feel that is because you're not training that range of motion and you're also not training this bottom up type of power. So we can fix that by number one, getting strong in that range through our strength training. So that's a different topic altogether, but we can also need to work on it to train our body how to be explosive from this position. So that one of the simplest ones we start with is just a knee down vertical jump. So we're just in our half kneeling position. We're gonna do a nice vertical jump coming up as high as we can. And we wanna get set and then explode from that. Remember this is, this is starting power that we want. So we don't wanna lean back and rock forward and use a bunch of momentum. We just wanna start from where we're at and drive down to get as high as we can. You're gonna do three sets of three on each side. It's not a race. We're not doing this as a conditioning drill. So it's just do one rep, reset. Do the next rep, reset. From there, we're gonna make it a little bit more dynamic. So we're gonna do a knee down lateral bound or a knee down skate bound. So this is a more dynamic type of strength. It's the other type of strength that we're gonna talk about a little bit more later. But again, we're just getting down. So we, we're not gonna smash our knee off the ground each time, but we definitely wanna get down into this low position each time. So we're gonna come across, tap that knee, So we'll do about three each way, just trying to minimize that initiation time. So speed training is really more of a skill. It's probably gonna be, well, it definitely is gonna be harder on your brain than it is on your muscles, because you really have to concentrate and think about contracting those muscles as fast as you can. Another time when we need this impulse speed is, let's say we are covering your posts here, the puck's in the corner behind the net, you're covering your post, and then you need to come right out to the top of your crease. So again, you don't want to have to load and go or do sort of a counter movement to get going. You wanna be here and then just right straight out to the top of your post. So we're gonna do a little lateral hop, stick and hold. We're gonna hold for three seconds, and then again, we're gonna hop back. But thinking about that initiation, not doing any cheating to preload, we're just gonna explode from where we're at. So if we're here, I'm holding one, two, three, and I'm just driving off that trail leg. So again, what you don't wanna see is um, a movement of your arms to initiate. You don't wanna see a load and go. You just wanna see from where you are, Push, one, two, three, one, two, three. You will do three sets of three repetitions, holding for three seconds. The number of today, <laughs> the number for today is the number three. It's brought to you by the letter Q. Sesame Street, anyone? Okay, never mind. Now, before we get to the other type of speed that we're gonna talk about, I want you to tell me, how do you feel when you're on the ice and you have speed to keep up with the play? Like you feel like you're fast enough to compete at that level. How does that, how do you feel that helps you? Or on the other side of it, how do you feel it hinders you when you don't have speed to catch up with the play? What do you feel? I know what I feel, but I'm interested to know what you feel and how it either helps you or hinders you. Now let's get to the other type of speed that we're gonna talk about, which is that more dynamic speed or moving speed or agility. 
So you're not always going to be just doing big lateral hopping movements, big powerful movements. You're going to have some of those little quick step shuffles, and then you're going to have to make big movements. So that's what we're going to work on a little bit with as we get into our dynamic speed or our agility. So if we come here and we can change, you know, don't forget to change your stance. So, you know, sometimes if we're shuffling, we are at a little bit of that taller stance, but do it in different stances. I'm just going to show you kind of in a mid range. So it's like, okay, I'm shuffling, 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 and I have to come back. So thinking, what are my hands doing? I don't want my hands wiggling around and then generating me back. Also think of what your torso is doing. And again, set up your phone and video yourself because what I see at training camps and I see it off the ice and on the ice is people shuffle, 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 and they get here and then their body keeps going as they push across. So you need to brace with your abdominals so everything comes across together. Shuffle, shuffle, <laughs> quick step, quick step. <laughs> and trying to minimize that leg and move with purpose. Sometimes I also see goalies that kind of dance through it, but we want it to be a little more deliberate and a lot more explosive than that. That's going to be three sets of three repetitions each way. So going this way with a big hop and then doing our quick step big hop back this way. Sometimes we get really caught up in what our big muscles are doing. So building strong quads, strong glutes, you know, getting those lat lateral pushers. And we forget about one of our most important joints, which is our ankle joint and the stability and the smarts of that joint. So we're going to start with just, this is just a little, um, it's just called a slat. <laughs> so basically it's a line. You can tape out a line, use an imaginary line, draw one in chalk, whatever you want, but it doesn't have to be a hurdle. Don't make it like a box. It, it's, we're just trying to work on our quickness. So we're going to go for five seconds on and 10 seconds off. And we're just going to do a side to side hop. So precision matters. I don't want to be landing on that slat. I'm going to do five seconds on and I'm going to count how many I can do. But the idea that over the course of this, these are early off season exercises. So over the course of my first off season phase, I'm going to make it so that I can get more contacts in that five seconds. I'm going to rest for 10 seconds. Then I'm going to go on my other leg and you probably notice a side to side difference. One leg will be a little bit quicker than the other. We want to bring that into balance, but then I'll go off my other leg. So you can see my left is a little slower, not quite as smart, but that'll be five seconds on 10 seconds rest. And then I'll switch back to this leg. So I'm going to do two sets of five seconds on 10 seconds off on each leg, but we don't just use that lower leg in a side to side movement. We also use it, you know, if we're coming off our post, we'll use it to decelerate. We'll use it to do a little C cut to pivot back on the post. So we're going to do a single leg hop again, but this time when we hop over the line, we'll come into a little bit of internal rotation. We're not trying to crank our hip around. We just want a little bit of internal rotation. And as we come back a little bit of external rotation, trying not to move our body. So we really want that motion to take place at our hip joint, but there might be a little bit. So it'll look like this, boom. So trying to keep my pelvis straight forward. So you can see how, wow, that's a lot slower. That's my muscles are not very smart in that way. It just takes some practice. So if you work on this a couple times a week over the course of two to four weeks, it's going to get tremendously better. So your body's going to learn how to use that ankle joint a little better and that lower leg a little better. Once again, we'll do two repetitions of five seconds on 10 seconds off. Don't worry if you go a little bit slow to start with, just to sort of figure out the pattern. And remember, you're trying to keep your pelvis stable. So you don't want your pelvis to rotate side to side, ideally. So start a little slow, figure out the pattern, 
then worry about the speed. So those drills will get you started. This is a level one workout. So if you want me to do a level two video, what's the next progression? Just drop a comment below and let me know. I know I asked you the same thing when I did the plyometrics level one video and a bunch of you were like, yes, <laughs> level two. So that's actually in the hopper. It's coming soon. So just ask and you shall receive. Now, if you feel you want to jump ahead a little bit and you're like, I need more post to post speed, <laughs> then check out this video. I gave you some exercises specifically for that. If you need better mobility, check out the description where I have a free mobility program for you that you can download. Again, the cost is free. And now is when I ask you, I beg, I plead, hit the like button. I appreciate it. And the YouTube loves it too. If you hadn't subscribed already, do so now. If you've already subscribed, hit the bell. Who doesn't like hitting a bell? And as always, if there is an off ice goalie training topic that you want me to cover or something to do with gear, I'm an intermediate goalie like most of you. So anything in that realm, I'm not a goalie coach. I'm not an expert on that. But if there's anything you want me to cover, I'll give you my two cents worth or even five cents worth with inflation, uh, just drop it in the comments below and I'd be happy to help you out with that. Otherwise, same bat time, same bat channel. Love you guys.